hypersonic passenger aircraft. It flies at Mach 5, 90,000 feet above the Earth. It'll move people from New York to London in 90 minutes. We're going to build it. Mach 5 plus speeds. $18 million cost. Defeats $1 billion jet. U.S. multi-billion dollar hypersonic fighter jet engine is ready for action. The next generation American hypersonic jet engine has just come from one of the most unlikely sources, a startup called Hermaeus. Hermaeus is a company from Atlanta, Georgia, whose focus on hypersonic flight has enabled them to surpass Boeing, Raytheon Technologies, and Lockheed Martin in the development of a jet engine that could thrust an aircraft from a stationary position to hypersonic Mach 5 plus speeds. This engine is known as Chimera, named after the mythical creature that breathes fire as it does. Though Hermaeus Chimera is beyond myth. The engine has been tested and proven to work as advertised. Using Chimera, Hermaeus plans to power an autonomous aircraft as early as next year, which would signify the biggest progress in hypersonic flight in recent years. Should this happen as planned, Hermaeus would have developed an operational hypersonic engine in a record time of 21 months and a record cost of $18 million. For context, Lockheed Martin has been working on a hypersonic jet called the SR-72 Son of Blackbird since 2013, and each unit is expected to cost $1 billion. Surely, its engine would surpass the $18 million price tag of Hermaeus Chimera. If industry leader Lockheed Martin is yet to reveal any significant progress in creating a hypersonic jet after almost a decade, how has startup Hermaeus managed to pull it off? To answer this, we must take a look at what a turbojet ramjet engine is. Turbojet ramjet engine Hypersonic flight is best achieved via the use of a ramjet engine. However, ramjet engines cannot operate at slower speeds. They can only operate from Mach 3 up to Mach 6. This is because a ramjet has no fan, no compressor, no moving part really, and they only rely on a simple setup of immense pressure of air flowing into the inlet and around a cone for compression. After compression, this air is ignited to produce thrust. This raw material of immense pressure only occurs at speeds greater than Mach 3, hence why ramjets can't be used at speeds lower than that. However, the default speed of aircraft is not Mach 3, it's Mach 0. Therefore, ramjets cannot power aircraft to hypersonic speeds, at least not alone. They need to be teamed up with a different type of engine, a turbojet engine. A turbojet engine, which is generally used in fighter jets today, has a fan that sucks in air at whatever speeds and then squeezes that air with a compressor. The compressed air is then mixed with fuel and ignited, similar to how a piston compresses the air-fuel mixture in a car. The ignited air-fuel mixture pushes out the back of the engine as propulsion and powers a turbine in the process. This mechanical function of a fan, a compressor, and a turbine enables a turbojet engine to thrust a jet from a stationary position because the high-velocity air required to produce compressed air is produced by the compressor itself. In an interesting twist of fate, a turbojet engine begins to lose its efficiency at speeds approaching Mach 3. As we recall, this is the same speed where a ramjet begins to operate efficiently. Like a match made in heaven, a turbojet and a ramjet must therefore be combined to thrust an aircraft from a stationary position up to Mach 5 plus speeds. This combination forms a new engine, known as the Turbine-Based Combine Cycle Engine, or TBCC engine for short. This is how Hermaeus has developed a hypersonic engine, by building a TBCC engine known as Chimera. Chimera Chimera is a turbine-based combined cycle engine which, as we've just discussed, means it's a hybrid between a turbojet and a ramjet. 
The engine is expected to be installed on Hermaeus's first aircraft, Quarter Horse, by 2023. Quarter Horse will have a titanium alloy primary structure that's capable of handling the stress that accompanies hypersonic speeds. The aircraft will have a maximum operational range of 4,600 miles and a top speed of Mach 5 to make it the world's fastest aircraft. In a test that took place at the Notre Dame Turbo Machinery Laboratory, which provides heated air to simulate high Mach temperatures and pressures, Chimera's ability to power the quarter horse would be confirmed. At low speeds, Chimera would operate in turbojet mode, like any other jet aircraft. But as the temperature and the speed of the incoming air increase, and the turbojet begins to near its performance limit between Mach 2 and Mach 3, the ramjet takes over propulsion completely to keep the aircraft flying at speeds greater than Mach 3. This is how Chimera works, and it is so far the closest such an engine has gotten to operational status. Most hypersonic platforms today are powered by a rocket engine, but that makes reusability quite the task. By making a full-range, air-breathing hypersonic engine like Chimera that does not require a rocket to accelerate, Hermaeus is setting the stage for operational hypersonic flight, meaning aircraft that can be rapidly reused. An additional benefit of this engine design is that it accommodates existing transportation infrastructure. Hermaeus aircraft are designed to be operational at traditional airports. This is important not just for hypersonic testing, but also to bring Hermaeus's goal of both military and commercial hypersonic flight to life. To ensure that their aircraft would integrate well with commercial hypersonic travel, the startup has taken a number of cost-effective, quick-build steps one of which is additive manufacturing. As a result, about 15% of Chimera is 3D printed. At its current rate of growth, Hermaeus is looking to field a second, larger, military limited aircraft by 2025, and then a full hypersonic commercial passenger aircraft by 2029. Hermaeus could be the first to achieve these hypersonic feats at an operational level, or they could be surpassed by some other company in time. Because as Hermaeus works on its TBCC engine, so are other companies working on their future hypersonic engines. Future Hypersonic Engines There are a few other approaches to developing hypersonic engines, but the most notable of them are detonation engines and fusion power engines. As an overview, fusion-powered engines work similarly to how nuclear bombs derive their explosivity, while detonation engines work by harnessing the power of detonations. Now a detailed look. Detonation engines Detonation engines harness the power of detonations. Yes, detonation, as in the explosion of a bomb. There are multiple types of detonation engines the most advanced of which is the rotating detonation engine. However, this engine was birthed from the pulse detonation engine, which in itself was birthed from the pulse jet engine. Number 1. Pulse Jet Engines Pulse jet engines work by mixing air and fuel within a combustion chamber and then igniting the mixture to fire out of a nozzle in rapid pulses rather than under consistent combustion, as is seen in jet engines today. The air and fuel mixture then burns away in deflagration, steadily, peacefully, and with somewhat low energy, like a rapidly burning candle. Number 2. Pulse Detonation Engines Pulse detonation engines use explosions rather than gentle deflagration because detonation comes with significantly more energy and 20,000% faster shock waves than deflagration. This results in more thrust from the same amount of fuel and ultimately a system that propels a vehicle to speeds up to around Mach 5. Number 3. Rotating Detonation Engines Rather than having the detonation shock wave travel out of the back of the aircraft as propulsion, in rotating detonation engines, the waves travel around a circular channel within the engine itself, basically recycling the same thrust over and over again. And while extra fuel is added to recycle thrust, significantly less fuel is required to do so. In addition, 
This engine produces continuous thrust, in contrast to the thrust impulses of the pulse detonation engine. This results in better efficiency. That's all for detonation engines. Here's what fusion-powered engines have to offer. Fusion-powered engines A fusion reaction occurs when two smaller atoms combine to form a larger atom. The resulting energy released from such a reaction is where thermonuclear weapons get their explosivity from. For fusion-powered engines, this is where they generate thrust, massive amounts of it. In fact, fusion reactions are responsible for creating 85% of the sun's energy. With fusion-powered engines, an aircraft could, in theory, fly indefinitely without refueling. This is a similar case for the Navy's aircraft carriers, which are powered by nuclear reactors. These aircraft carriers can sail the seas non-stop for 25 years, without a need to refuel. Canceling the need for frequent refueling in aircraft, too, will save the U.S. from having to spend 2 billion gallons of aviation fuel every year while providing enough thrust to push the aircraft to hypersonic speeds. Fusion-powered engines, detonation engines, and turbine-based combined cycle engines are currently at the forefront of American hypersonic travel efforts, and although they each approach it differently, the result is the same. To thrust an aircraft from a stationary position to speeds high enough to make the most advanced cameras see a blur. The only scientifically proven way to truly see aircraft powered by these engines is by subscribing to this channel and giving this video a like. So do so now. Thanks for watching.